G'day, this is Scotty Tucker from Clearwater Lakes and Ponds, sitting here with uh, the editor of Pond Boss magazine, Mr Bob Lusk. And uh, Bob, we're at, outside your lovely ponds, or one of your lovely ponds here in uh, Dallas, and uh, you've got a, quite a few fish in here and are using the pond for swimming, but uh, also for fishing, where you, your kids and grandkids come down here and cast a line and pull out a, a largemouth bass and some of the other fish species that you're lucky enough to hear, have here in the United States. Uh, some of our viewers at home might be wanting to look at a fish pond like this or a lake that they, they can also enjoy some recreational fishing. So what are the types of things that you need to consider and uh, should be thinking about if you want to have a, a successful fish out pond. Well Scotty let me tell you, let me tell you folks, if you don't have a fishing pond be the first one to get one. It's absolutely a blast. You know, 30 years ago when I started into this business people had farm ponds just like what you, you may have and they might put a few fish in it you know just for fun maybe for the environment to help keep the pond clean Scotty. But as time has gone by, people here have really begun to recognize the, just the aesthetic appeal and the peace and the serenity that a pond can bring along with the recreational fishing. Not to mention the fact that you can put a little food on the table and we're not opposed to that at all. So I would encourage you guys and, and gals to think about having a, a pond with fish in it. I mean, you've got several species of fish in Australia that are a, a very appealing. I wish we had some of those here. And I know you guys might wish that you had some largemouth bass, but I promise you, you've got some fish there that will be just as much fun, maybe more. Here's, here's the advice that I give to have a good fishing pond. The the first thing to think about when you're trying to develop a pond for recreational fishing is habitat. As goes the habitat, so goes what lives in it. If you have the right habitat for Murray cod, they're going to do well. If you have the right habitat for largemouth bass, they're going to do well. But if you don't have the right habitat for the food chain for largemouth bass or Murray cod, they won't do nearly as well. So you need to provide the kinds of habitat. My experience in the United States has shown me that about 90% of the fish live in 10% of any given pond. So I, I like to tell people to, to design the interior of a pond to where you have anywhere from 10 to 20% of that pond with congregation points, habitat, spawning areas, places the fish can feed, places the fish can ambush for ambush feeders. You know, some fish eat other fish, some fish eat insects, but there's, there'll be a food chain. And if you can supply the habitat for the food chain as well as for the game fish, you're going to be more likely to have a successful fishery and a fun recreational pond where that that six-year-old grandson can, can have that rod bent down like that, cheeks puffed out, catching a big fish and really having fun and just, you know, laughing and just enjoying that pond. It all starts with habitat. Remember that, most important thing. Everything else that goes beyond that won't work unless you have the right habitat for the fish that you choose to use for a fishing pond. Great advice, and uh, I can imagine there's been quite a few six-year-olds over here with a, uh, a smile on their face leaving this place. Uh, all right, well, what about uh, some of the things when it comes to water quality? Do you need, need to consider, we've already spoken in one of our previous uh, video logs about uh, the, some of the things to consider for an aesthetic pond. Are they similar with a, a fish pond? Do you need to look at things differently, or is it pretty much the same? Well, they're fundamentally the same. You know, the scientific principles are all the same, but pond management ends up being an art. You know, different fish have different requirements, Scotty. Uh, a shad has a different water quality need than a largemouth bass. And a large largemouth bass has different environmental needs in water than a small largemouth bass. So one of the things that, that you do need to pay attention to is water quality. Every, every single species of animal or plant that lives in water has certain uh, ranges that they tolerate. Now, specifically speaking, pH is the number one thing that fisheries managers look at. Uh, a pH of 7 is neutral. A pH higher than that is basic. pH lower than that is acidic. Some fish can tolerate acid water better than they can tolerate alkaline water or basic water. So a, a good fundamental understanding of the animals that you're going to choose will dictate to you what the water quality needs to be like. One of the things to always remember about water quality is that we want good aeration. You know, we want good oxygen content. We want good um, 
uh, uh, flowing water if we can with, with those aeration systems. We want to have a good food chain. Maybe the water needs to be fertile for little bitty fish. So, yes, pay close attention to the water because that's where it all starts. Uh, without the water, we don't have fish. So, yes, pay close attention to the water. Once again, great advice. Well, it certainly sounds like it's a little bit more complicated than just uh, digging a hole in the ground and stocking it with fish, but uh, it's nice to know that there's help out there and uh, plenty of information going around. So uh, by all means, uh, start looking up uh, wherever you can. Give me a call, give Bob a call if you're uh, over here in the States and uh, we're here to help.